he must have gone into the stage on or something. Okay. Hmm. There we go. Andrea? Yeah. You want to play the play the video? Yeah, are we ready to go? Mm -hmm. One second. Good evening, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to a very special evening. Good evening, everyone. We're delighted to welcome everyone for what should be, once again, a very, very memorable and special evening which is being co-hosted and sponsored by Mizrahi UK. Tonight, we are delighted to be able to welcome all the way from Israel, Sivan Ya'ari, who is the founder and CEO of Innovation Africa, a nonprofit organization that brings Israeli solar, agricultural and water technologies to African villages. Sivan was born in Israel, raised in France, educated in the United States. She's got the best of all worlds. Sivan has been working in Africa for over 20 years and over the past decade using Israeli technologies. She has managed to bring with her team clean water and light to nearly 3 million people across 10 African countries. Sivan has received multiple awards, including Innovation Award from the United Nations, and she has been recognized 
as one of the 50 most influential women in Israel by Forbes. She lives in Tel Aviv with her husband and three children, and it is a true privilege and honor for us to be able to welcome Sivanya Ari to our program tonight. Good evening and welcome Sivan. Thank you, Rabbi. I am truly delighted to be with you this evening. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with you what uh, we have done for the past 10 years in using Israeli technologies and changing and transforming uh, villages in, in Africa. I truly hope that at some point I will have the chance to meet you all in person, hopefully soon. And until then, allow me to start by sharing a short video about what we've been able to do uh, with solar energy across Africa. Here we go. Typhoid, diarrhea, vomiting. People use the very water. And people get sick. Nabata mgonja, homa, malaria. Darkness, because we don't have light. We use kerosene. We don't deliver the services as we must. It was very difficult for us children to study at night. People drink muddy water, children uh, studying without uh, having a light. Even the mother couldn't give birth because the health center doesn't have a light at night. And for us at Innovation Africa, we want to change that. Innovation Africa was founded 10 years ago with a very simple mission to bring Israeli technologies to transform schools, medical centers, but most importantly, to pump water. When we reach to communities and you mention the word water, at that time you see the smile on faces of these people. We identify the village that are in need of water, we build a tower and we distribute uh, the water taps all around the village. The first transformation we see ever, their skins improve. Any human being should have access to clean water. We have water under the ground. The sun is shining every day. With the knowledge and Israeli technology, we can make a change and forever. Once we do it, it completely transforms the village. I believe Innovation Africa can change Africa. have any dream of getting clean water in our community in Uganda here. So we really appreciate the team from Israel. When we use this solar at night, children are able to read properly, the teachers are able to teach. We are very grateful for Innovation Africa. I take this opportunity to thank Innovation Africa to bring us power in our facility. You are our fathers and mothers from Israel. Innovation Africa has made more children to come to study because of the lights and the water. Innovation Africa kutulete mradi wa maji. Na sasa hivi maji mpaka shuleni yanafika 
natumia muda mwingi kusoma siangaiki tena kwenda kutafuta maji na maji yako karibu tunawashukuru sana Innovation Africa We are committed to bring water where there is drought, to bring light where there is darkness, to bring hope and dignity where there is despair. Thank you very much for your patience in watching this video. I was asked this evening to share with you why as an Israeli, as a woman, as a daughter, as a wife, as a mother, I've decided to continue and bring and to share Israeli knowledge, Israeli technologies to help to improve the life of people across Africa. Allow me first to start by saying that there was no reason for me to, to work in Africa. I was born in Israel. My father was not a businessman working in Africa. He was not a diplomat. In fact, my father was most of my childhood, unfortunately was unemployed. And because it was a bit difficult at home financially, when I was still young, we moved to France where my parents were looking for a job. But in France, they couldn't find a job. But my mother, such a smart woman, she said, I will make pizza. We're going to sell pizza in the market. And they started this family business. And I'm not joking, but after a few years of having pizza every dinner, lunch, and breakfast, and I was this big, I told my parents, you know what? I really need better nutrition. And I know where I have to go. I'm going to join the Israeli army. I left France. I came to Israel. I was then 12, 18 years old. And at the age of 20, I got very lucky. At the age of 20, that was 22 years ago. I was lucky. I was in Israel. I was looking for a job. And then I met the owner of Jordash Jeans. Do you know Jordash Jeans? Was it in London? Was it in the UK? M many, about 20, 25 years ago. And he told me, I asked him for a job. And he told me, you know, your English is not good. I said, I speak French. He said, oh, if you speak French, I do have a job for you. I own a factory in Madagascar where we make jeans. Why don't you go to Madagascar, check the quality of the jeans before we ship them to the US? I said, Madagascar, where is it? He said, it's in Africa. And this is, our, this is how I said, yes, I take the job. And this is how 22 years ago, I arrived to the continent and I haven't left. Would you like to see some pictures? Okay, let's see. Okay. Now, let me show you this. The following pictures, as you're gonna see, can you see the screen? No, no. No, cannot, okay, let's try again. Although we bring Israeli technology, doesn't mean that we know Zoom very well. Now it's done. Here we go. Can you see it now? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, the next pictures, what's good about it, as you can see, I haven't changed. Look at me. I am in Rishon Etzion in Israel. Look at me. I look lovely. I have shoes. I'm clean. When I got to Africa, this is when I realized what it means to have not much. Here is my first picture outside of the factory of Jordesh Jeans in Madagascar. 
I spent time with the children. They took me to their village. And after spending time in the villages, I realized two things. The first, many of them, the children are not going to school. And some of the parents and children, they needed medical care. I was looking for a medical center. I was trying to see if I can bring some help to the village. But when I got to the medical center, I then saw that many people were waiting, waiting outside, inside, so many of them. I asked for the doctor. They said, no doctor. The nurse came. I said, excuse me, why are you not helping the people? Maybe I can help you. She said, no, I cannot. I don't have vaccines. I don't have medicines. I said, why? She said, everything is spoiled. I said, why? She said, we don't have a refrigerator. We do not have what? Electricity. And that's when I understood the problem of energy. Here's in the evening, the nurse was using kerosene to give birth. And that's how people were waiting with kerosene lamp. I went to the nearby school. And here again, I could see some students studying with kerosene. And after I spoke to them, I found out that the children sitting on the first row, they are the richest in the village. And why they are the richest? Because they brought money to buy kerosene. If you have money to buy kerosene, you can sit by the light. If you don't have money, you sit in the back. I said, if we can just bring some energy, we, electricity, that could help. But then I was uneducated. I didn't know what to do. I continued working for Jordash. At that time, they had seven factories across Africa. I traveled to more countries. And then I realized it is not about one or two villages without electricity. It is not a one, one or two countries. It is actually about a continent. Even today, as many of you probably know, even today, there are over 600 million people across Africa that have never seen a light bulb. And so I decided to go and get my education. I went to the US, I got my master's in energy. And as a student, I asked my professor, how can I go back to help the school, the medical center? And my professor told me, Sivan, what's the big deal? All you need to do is to buy two solar panels. Two solar panels will be enough to bring enough energy to the school or to the medical center. I said, that's all. He said, that's all. I was part of the Hillel group, the Jewish Hillel. I was part of the students group and then I raised some money. It was not expensive. Two solar panels as a student. It was from Columbia University. I went back from New York and with my two solar panels. Do you like my hairdo? It was in the fashion back then. It was in the fashion. And so with the two solar panels installed on the roof, that was enough to bring enough energy to the entire medical center, inside, outside. And I even brought a small refrigerator for vaccines. And you have to see the joy of the people and the line of mothers and children waiting to get vaccinated. I really thought this is so simple, so cheap, we have to do more. I went back, I raised more money, went back to the school and hear what we have done. Now, everything was good. I felt good about myself until the day I realized I made a mistake. Now, please, I made many mistakes. I failed many times, but this was my first mistake. Now, who can think what I forgot? Think about it. I went to the school, I installed solar energy, I left. I went to the medical center, I've brought electricity and I left. What's gonna happen in, in about nine months? What I forgot? 
Who is going to pay to replace the light bulbs? Hmm? What I was thinking, that the children, the students are going to pay for it? That the nurse has the money to pay for new light bulbs? Of course not. In nine months, a year from now, they're going to go back to be in darkness. I needed to find a solution for them to raise money, to have enough money to replace the light bulbs and the batteries. And so I found a solution. When I went back to the villages, I could see many people having cell phones. Now I was curious, where did they charge their cell phones? There is no electricity. And this gentleman, this is the guy, he came to me and told me, I am in charge of collecting the cell phones. I go to another village, I charge them, I pay. And when I return, that's what they do every few days. I said, that's wonderful. Is there electricity in the other village? He said, no, there is no electricity. There is a car. We are using the car to charge one phone after the other. We pay the owner of the car and that's what we do. I said, please, tomorrow, bring, bring the phones to the school. We can use the solar energy to charge the phones and you can pay the money to the teacher. So the teacher can have money to replace the light bulbs. Is that a good idea? Let's see what's happened. Here's what's happened the first day. Here's what's happened after three days. It really worked. And let me tell you, after three months, they used the solar energy to open another business to make more money by using to creating a barber shop. I said, this is wonderful. We have to continue. I opened a non-for-profit. I raised money. I brought electricity to more schools, medical centers until one day I realized I made another mistake. Here is it a school in Uganda. When I arrived, the teacher told me, Sivan, thank you for the solar energy, but we are not using it. I said, why? He said, look, the children are not coming. They are too weak to walk. I said, why are they weak? They said, there is no water. There is famine. And this is when I realized that the real mistake that I've made was not asking at the beginning, at the first village, I should have asked why children are not going to school. Because if I would have asked, I would have understood that children are spending days, hours every day with their mothers searching for water. Now, please, I know some of you are aware of it, but today we have more, more than 450 million people searching for water. Those pictures are only for the past few months. So when we talk about COVID-19, about Corona, about washing hands, this is actually a picture from February, 2020, just before we, we came back to Israel. That was in Zambia. That's a village of 4,000 people. That was the only source of water they had. Now, let us watch a movie, but before, I do want you to see that actually there is plenty of clean water. They don't have to drink dirty water because there is plenty of clean water just below their feet in the aquifers. If, if you look at that map, you can see everywhere across Africa, as long as we drill, we can find water and plenty of it. But what we need and what we don't have is the energy to pump the water. And so I will show you one of the This is some of the communities which you, I want you to see. And you see how these people, how they are being affected with famine. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for allowing us to come. Hi, good morning. Yeah. 
had three days. Some of them have not had food. What do they eat now? What do they have? They, they eat the leaves of the trees right now? Yeah. This is unbelievable, child. It's not human. Of anger, she tied her stomach. Yeah. That, get us corn, get us beans. Is that okay? And find out where is the water. God bless her. Please tell them that we gonna come back. But we're gonna come back to pump water. Be upon your quarrack and I keep it down at dinner, Maria de Quadio Shoma. As you can see, the solution is simple. And since then, we've been building, constructing simple solar water pumping system, like, like you can see here. We're using the energy from the sun to pump water in villages across Africa. And only last year, 2020, we have done 206. We have brought clean water to 206 villages and, 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 and it's just simple. To be honest, the solution exists. All we do, first we drill deep to the aquifers. We, find, we found water all the time. And then we build a tower with a few solar panels. We give the energy to power the pump. The pump is pumping the water to a tank. And from the tank, through gravity, water flows to the different taps that we are installing throughout the village. We're talking about villages of 3,000 to 10,000 people. And then that's it. And then the sun, the energy from the sun pumps the water. And that's all. That's it. And it is life changing. And when we can, we also bring another tank, this time just to bring enough water for the drip irrigation that we bring from Israel. This is to allow them to grow more food with less water. So as you can imagine, it, it is truly making a lot of changes in the villages. Here is here just one example. I, I had been planning to grow some onions. I have here a nursery bed, a very huge one, and it has assisted me to water. We had no rain. This problem has been running for centuries. We had no water right from my childhood. No water. About four kilometers away where we could get water. But right now, I'm so happy that when Innovation Africa came, I had this plan. Onions, if you grow onions, it carries a lot of money. I said, as I will grow these onions, I will enable myself to pay for my children, to buy food, to sustain me. Even the family problems, I will be solving them with the help of this water project. Thank you so much. And then do you remember the homes, the mad homes? When we go back, once we give them water, no more mud homes. They build homes 
they make money. Here's one example as well. At first, we used to get water for longer distance. Having a baby, when I'm pregnant, it is very long distance to get water. It took me time. But when uh, we got water from Novation Africa, I'm getting water near here while cooking, washing, even making bricks. After making bricks, now I'm building the house, new home. Even I say bricks to the nearest <coughs> villagers, even from town, they come and they buy from me. When I get money, I pay my school fees to the children. We are happy of it. Good. So as of today, the organization Innovation Africa, we have here in Israel, we have a team of engineers, but we also have teams of engineers in Africa. We operate in 10 African countries and we have brought access to water, electricity as a conservative number to 2.7 million people. It's a little bit more as, a, as of now. And here's just a quick list of all the project we have done in Uganda. As you can see, we have brought access to computers and medical equipment, solar energy, water, drip irrigation to, to many villages. Um, here is Malawi, Zambia. Uh, we, we are funded also by UNICEF. They give us funding for Cameroon, where we help refugee camps for refugees fleeing Boko Haram from Nigeria to Cameroon, and we, we are helping to bring water uh, for the refugees and medical centers. So we feel blessed that we have been able to do uh, so much, although it's just a drop in the ocean, to be honest. And we're just lucky because we have different families, donors that are adapting villages. So every family adapts one village and this is the cost of what it takes to bring everything that we, we have talked about to a school, a medical center, or for water to an entire village. And this is in, in pound. We are lucky because uh, we've been recognized by United Nations. And for me, it was important as a Zionist. Uh, Israel is important to me. And finally, they recognized us. It was a miracle. So that was terrific. And the reason why they give us the gift, the, the award, is because in Israel, here in this office, we have developed a few technologies. One of them is the remote monitoring system, allowing us to monitor the solar systems that we're installing in Africa at all time. But not only us, also the donors. They can see on their phones how much water we are pumping every day. And if something breaks, we get alerts. And this is just reassuring that the projects are sustainable. So allow me to conclude by uh, saying that we, we are feeling blessed uh, to, to be, of course, Israeli and also to be able to, to help. But here's what I've learned. I've learned two things. The first, sometimes, the source of the problem can also be the source of the solution. The sun was the problem and the sun was also the solution here. And for me, I grew up thinking that I was poor, which was my problem for many years until I realized that actually it was my solution because today all I want is to truly help those that really don't have much because I was actually very lucky and my kids are very, very lucky and uh, we should not complain. And the last message of what I've learned, it really doesn't take much to help others. The technology exists. All we need is to share. Um, so this is it for the presentation. Thank you all for your patience uh, and, and for listening and allowing us to share the work that we are doing. And we are just one of many organizations, Israeli organizations that are doing so many goods around the world. So um, thank you for that. Sivan. 
Um, we are told to be a light upon the nations. And what you have done is you've taken it literally, you've taken the light and brought it to the nations. I have been so moved by your presentation in terms of what one person, you know, you've left footprints on the whole of Africa, which is just absolutely incredible. So thank you for that amazing presentation. You're very kind. Thank you, Gila. Thank you. Are you okay for us to ask a few questions? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to go backward and, and just look at what you've achieved. You've achieved so much in these past 10 years. We are curious if the next 10 years will bring the same or will Innovation Africa change its focus? Oh, God willing, we will continue. And I believe we will be doing the same because at the end of the day, water... It's essential. It's crucial. It, it, it truly transforms the lives of the people we are helping. So I think we will continue by bringing light, energy, and water, and then uh, that's that is uh, is enough to make a big impact on the communities we are helping. And, and bringing bringing it to today has COVID impacted. I know you said you were meant to be you weren't were meant to be there now today, but has it impacted on on the work and and what yeah. you are able to do? Yeah, I have to tell you, we were quite worried at the beginning, uh, even now, about how will they be able to to fight the spread of the virus in in the villages where you have no water, you cannot clean your hands. Yeah. You go to medical centers, no machine, no equipment. Mm. And so we're very, very lucky because this year, although we have not traveled that much, we, we got funding and we were able, our local teams, the locals, our local teams in each one of the countries where we operate, they understood the urgency of the situation and they went and they've done the work. And I must say that only this year we have done 206 villages, which is almost double of what we have done last year. And so I can see that people finally understand, I think now that if we really, if we really want to make an impact, it doesn't take much energy is needed, water is essential and it can be done. So I think um, from that point of view, um, the corona just helped us to understand that what we are doing is, is the right thing. Sivan, I just want to echo Gila's sentiments. It, you know, we are completely overwhelmed, you know, with the uh, in, in extraordinary accomplishments and achievements that you have uh, achieved in Africa. When we saw those videos, one of the questions that went through my mind, and I'm sure many others, is, you know, do you ever say, I've done my bit, I've achieved, nigma, gamanu, leave it to someone else? Do you ever have a sense of achievement? Or is the fact that as much as you do, you always recognize that there's so much more to do that you never feel any satisfaction in what you're actually accomplishing how do you feel about what you've done and what there is still to do we are of course satisfied but um i don't know the thing is that you know we are problem solvers and because the solution is so simple the simplicity of the solution when you are in the village and you can see the impact that you're making, you can see the smile of the people getting clean water. When you see people looking, it's priceless. And all you want to do is to just do it more and more and more. And so, and, and so this is the kind of feeling all of us here in Israel, the, the entire team, they all have the passion to continue and to do. And, and so... I really hope, God's willing, that we will not have to do it anymore in 10 years, really. Yeah. But yeah. now, as long as we can, we, we shall continue. Right. Somewhere in, in, in your presentation, you mentioned that, you, that you're a proud Zionist. Um, I, I was curious when you mentioned that, so bringing Israeli innovations to African villages, how important is it for you to those who benefit to understand exactly where the help is coming from. Yeah, 
I, I must say that most of the time when we get to the villages and we mention Israel, mention, many of them have never heard of Israel unless they read about Israel in the Bible. Right. And then what they see, what they believe is that God actually answered the prayers. And then they see light and they see us and they wow. see the Jerusalem. And, and for me, it, it, I'm happy about that because that's the first face of Israel they see. And I, I like that. And, and when it comes to the government, they are truly appreciative about Israel, about what Israel has been being to accomplish. They want, they're happy to know that we are there to share our experience, to share our technology, and we are the most welcomed in, in the countries where we operate. So um, it is good. So truly, like I mentioned before, an or la goyim, a light to the nations, you're really fulfilling so much more than just the physical, but you're also touching the spiritual. Um, I have a curiosity. I, I know you have three children. Um, how easy or how difficult? On the videos, I see you spend a lot of time in Africa. How, how does your work, if I may ask, impact on your family life? Yeah, you know, I, I do have three children. And, um, but most importantly, I have a good husband. <laughs> because he, you know, he allowed me to continue to travel. I travel sometimes one week, two weeks a month. And he kept telling me, don't worry about our kids. They're okay. Continue. They need more, more help. We're fine. And then of course I, I also have now help at home and my parents are no longer making pizza. Now they're in Israel. They live by me oh. and helping me. And it, it is just it is good. It is good. And my kids are traveling with me to Africa, actually. I took them with me. Mm -hmm. and, and now with the FaceTime, I keep showing them everything so they can see everything that is happening so they understand. Yeah. They understand where I am, what I do. They give me shoes. They give me clothes. I, I take it to the orphanage. And uh, so I, I try to keep them involved. So... Okay. They will allow me to continue to travel. That's the truth. So, so it's become really a family project. It is. It is for now. It is. And um, it's good. And I think it's good for the children to see it because then they appreciate. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. It's so much not about what we say, but about what we do. And I think you, you're showing such an incredible role model to them. Just yeah. a, a final big question, if, if, if you can. What would you say to young people? I know many young people are going to end up watching this. What would you say to young people who dream of making an impact on the world the, the same way as you have? What would be your message to them? Yeah, absolutely, they should. And they should start small. I started at one village. Hmm. I had no vision. I failed many times. But each time I tried, little by little, village by village. And today it's a bigger organization, but it wasn't like this before. And so I would say start. And, and if, if there is another thing that maybe I would like to share with you is, is that there is one verse in the Bible that keeps me going. And I think many of us here in Israel and is when from Bereshit, from Genesis, when God promised Abraham, and he told him, I will make you a great nation. You will be a blessing. And through you, through your descendants, all the families on earth, earth will be blessed. And when we think, I mean, at least for me, when we think about Israel today, such a small country, yet so many innovation, I think it's no accident. I think God has something to do with it. I think he wants us to share and to bless all the families on earth. I think that only now we're so lucky that Israel is strong, that we can truly fulfill our destiny, that we couldn't before. And now, and so for all the young people, what I'm saying is that now we can do it. Now, finally, we can do it. Our generation can make a change for sure. 
You're making me tearful, Sivan, because you're speaking about Israel being a blessing. And, and all I can think is the blessing that you are, the blessing that you are to Israel, the blessing that you are to all these millions of people, that you've brought basic life, water, light, and you've made such a difference. So if there was one word to describe you, I would say blessing that you are. Very kind you. Thank you very much. Sivan, we want to thank you on behalf of the community for so graciously giving of your time to join us this evening. Thank you also behind the scenes to Michal, who facilitated this, to Mizrahi UK, and for everyone else who made this possible. We started a new series, as you saw in the promo video, and it's called Jewish Impact. And when we were looking around the world for people as role models, as ambassadors that would embody this idea, First name on the sheet, first person on the list was Sivan Yaari. And I have to tell you that we are bowled over by you. We just want to come with you <laughs> to come to Africa, to make a difference and to be inspired and please God to emulate you. Thank you so much on behalf of the whole community. Friends, we will be back next week for another episode of Jewish Impact. But for tonight, I want to thank on your behalf, Sivan Yaari, Thank you so, so much and wishing you bracha vatzlacha to you, your team and all of you for the future. Thank you so much. Good night. Bye. Thank you.